I'll see what's going to happen. Um, I think we're going to have uh, Steve Spires now. You want to go, David? Uh, Steve, uh, Steve's a policy analyst with the Louisiana Budget Project. Um, and we look forward to seeing you today. Okay, everybody. Thanks again, Keith, and everyone here in Huntington Springs for hosting us. I'm Alma Kikoto and Linda put the panel together. Really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Steve Spire, I'm a policy analyst for the Louisiana Budget Project. We're a nonprofit group that looks at how public policy affects low to moderate income families. And a lot of my research focuses on Medicaid and, um, and the uninsured here in our state. So you can see I'm editorializing a bit in my, in my title here. Medicaid expansion is right choice for Louisiana. I think I'm a bit unique on this panel because the Medicaid expansion is the last part of health care reform that is as yet kind of undecided. Uh, when the Supreme Court upheld the law, they said that Medicaid expansion was essentially optional for states. As of now, Louisiana won't be expanding, um, but they can choose to expand at any time if that's made clear. So this is the uh, kind of the last decision that needs to be made. And I'm going to talk about some of the research I've done on what Medicaid expansion would mean or not mean for Louisiana. Uh, just a bit about the budget project. Uh, so first, I think there's been you know, some agreement for years that some form of health reform is needed, whether you like the ACA or not. You know, especially here in Louisiana, one in four working age adults under 65 are uninsured. Uh, one of the reasons for that is we have some of the strictest Medicaid eligibility um, in the nation, as Linda talked about earlier. Um, employer sponsored coverage has been declining, you know, steeply because of the recession, but even before the recession, it's been on a downward decline. Um, you know, and on the other hand, you know, we know on the Medicaid side, Medicaid expansions, you know, do significantly expand coverage prior to the Children's Health Insurance Program, or the CHIP, uh, prior to the implementation of the CHIP in the late 90s, about 20% of kids are insured. Now, 5% of kids are insured. So that's a huge policy success that um, everyone in the Department of Health, uh, David here was, was around the uh, Department of Health in those days. That's been a big policy success here in our state that I think we don't talk about much. This is kind of a, a map right here showing you what Medicaid eligibility looks like. We do a really good job covering children and pregnant women. We do a pretty good job covering long-term care and people with disabilities. But you know, that big gap in the middle there, um, and that, that's parents and other adults. You know, right now, if you're a parent, you really can't make that much money. You know, not much more than three three thousand dollars in annual income. And if you're an adult without a child, you can't qualify at all regardless of your income. So one of the big coverage expansions involved uh, in the Affordable Care Act was to increase that eligibility limit. Um, to all people, you can see that's the red dotted line. So for an individual, it would be about $14,800 in annual income for a family of three, about $25,000 would now make you eligible for Medicaid, make adults eligible for Medicaid. Again, this Medicaid expansion is you know, primarily aimed at working age adults, other people are already covered in different eligibility categories. So I want to talk about some of the research I've done into who would be covered by Medicaid expansion. Now, we looked at some census data and found that it's about 330,000 uninsured adults who uh, meet these income requirements to qualify for Medicaid, they found that the majority of that 200,000 are working. Um, and, and a lot of them are in sectors like construction, uh, entertainment, tourism, you know, retail, and also a significant number of folks that work in healthcare um, and in childcare. So you know, a lot of these people, um, if you're an employer, could be your employees. Using that census data, we wanted to see where these people were working. And you can see kind of the top, the top workplaces, restaurants, construction, grocery stores, you know, this is where um, where a lot of these workers are. And a lot of these folks make minimum wage or slightly above minimum wage. Uh, most of them, you know, work year round. Maybe a parent with a few kids. Uh, so this is really who we're talking about when we're talking about Medicaid expansion. This is why I think that it's such an important issue and really the right choice for you know, the lower income working people in our state. This kind of shows you uh, when I'm talking about these jobs and these wages that would qualify a person for Medicaid expansion. Just a sampling we went to the Louisiana Workforce Commission and pulled up some some wage data to show you. You know, some of, just some, some samples there. Uh, you know, another thing I think is important about expansion is that it means more health security. It's what we would call a counter-cyclical program, just like uh, unemployment insurance. You know, when the economy uh, goes into a downturn, as it did in 2008, 2009, enrollment rises, people lose their jobs and lose their health insurance. You can see here the unemployment rate and the uh, number of uninsured adults uh, kind of went together. And right now, uh, the uh, number of people on Medicaid in our state is higher than it has been mainly because children whose parents lost their health insurance have been able to move on the program and maintain covered. But you can see on that graph on the right, you know, a lot of their parents, a lot of other adults, because of our strict income limits, um, were not able to fall into that same safety net and have become uninsured. We also want to see, you know, kind of where people in the state are. So this is a map we put together of um, kind of percentage of each parish's population that would qualify for Medicaid expansion but are uninsured today. And uh, you know, the light blue is, is the smallest percentage and the dark blue is the heaviest percentage. You 
see, especially in the northern part of the state and along the Mississippi River, and a lot of the areas that we know are high property areas in the state, um, as much as 15 to 20 percent of that parish of all population is uninsured today and could be covered by Medicaid if Louisiana chose to expand. You know, a lot of people are concerned about the cost of Medicaid expansion, rightfully so. We've had uh, a lot of tough budget years, both federal level and Louisiana. But I think when you look at it, Medicaid expansion is a pretty good deal for the state. For the first three years, 2014 through 2016, 100% of the cost is picked up on defense. Um, state slowly chips in after that, but never has to pay more than 10% in 2020 and, and on, on in perpetuity. And so, you know, that perspective, right now, we pay about 35 40% of our current Medicaid program. So this is a, a much more favorable match, uh, as we would call it, which was a way to kind of incentivize the states to give states support in, um, in, in implementing this policy. I also think the state cost has been exaggerated. Um, the general administration and uh, some estimates they have say it would cost $3.7 billion over 10 years. Uh, we've looked into it, some other folks at Kaiser and Herman Institute looked into it and found it. It was probably more like a billion dollars. That sounds like a lot, maybe saying a billion dollars. We don't have a billion dollars, but um, when you look at what the state would have spent on Medicaid over that 10 year period, it's really only an increase of 1 or 2%, 3%. Uh, and those. So it's, you know, we consider that we could cover, you know, those 200,000 working people, 300,000 people total through this policy for that money. I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, and there's also other cuts in the Affordable Care Act that go to uh, what we would call dish payments. These are disproportionate share of hospital payments. What this basically means is this money that the feds set aside to give the states to help cover uninsured people. And um, that money is going to be cut with the expectation that when uninsured people gain insurance and Medicaid, the exchanges that Jay talked about, there would be less need for that money. Those cuts are still happening. The Supreme Court decision did not affect those cuts. So if the state doesn't expand Medicaid, you know, the hospitals are going to see less of this money to get uninsured, yet it's not going to get uh, take advantage of any of the new revenue um, from Medicaid expansion. And many people, uh, the Kaiser uh, Foundation have estimated that it means $15.7 billion in new federal revenue for Louisiana over 10 years if uh, we choose to expand. Another important thing to talk about when you look at healthcare reform and Medicaid expansion is, um, you know, we're already paying right now for the large number of uninsured people we have in the state. You know, one in four adults in the state are uninsured, but they still have healthcare needs. And um, you know, we spend millions of dollars, state and local governments, uh, spend millions of dollars to cover them when they go to the emergency room or the clinics. Uh, providers, nonprofit health providers, provide subsidized or free care, and they, they meet that cost as the cost of uncompensated care. Um, there's also a degree of cost shifting where those with private insurance are charged more to help make up uh, for care is provided to the uninsured. Uh, so, you know, the idea that right now we're paying nothing and we'll have to be paying Medicaid expansion, I don't think this is really accurate. Uh, Medicaid expansion will, I think, improve the system and make it a bit more efficient. I'm going to talk a bit about a health insurance exchange, but I think Jay covered that really well, and I don't want to take too much of your time. So, um, I want to talk a bit about the positive health impacts of, of insurance, both Medicaid and other insurance. Um, you know, right now, it's no surprise we're right near the bottom in, uh, in national health rankings. We have high rates of diabetes, high rates of adults with smoke, things like that. Uh, but you know, a lot of new research has shown that you know, when people gain Medicaid coverage, that it really doesn't improve their health care, despite some myths to the contrary. People who gain Medicaid are more likely to have access to a primary care physician, face less financial stress, report better well-being. Um, and so the most recent research out of the Northeast and the Southwest has shown that uh, states that extended Medicaid to adults voluntarily over the last two decades actually have lower mortality rates than their neighboring states. So the, the positive health impacts are real, and they're out there. And there's also positive economic impacts. We estimate that today Medicaid supports around 50,000 jobs um, in the state. And uh, when we get that $15.7 billion for 10 years coming to the economy, that that, um, that, that will in, in increase. We also think that you know, Medicaid expansion will mean more, more competition for healthcare services. Right now, if you're uninsured, you, know, you may know of an LSU hospital or clinic in your community where you can go and get, get free care. But once you get a Medicaid card, you can you know, try to go to other providers, and providers can really compete for that new business. But we definitely have concerns about there being doctors in the state. We know we have a shortage. But I think that the potential is there to increase competition and to really improve the healthcare market. So I think there's direct benefits for employers. Healthier workforce is a more productive workforce. When people have insurance, it means fewer mistakes at work. It means better management of chronic illness. It means they can work longer, be more productive, you know, create more profit for their employers, create more tax revenue by working longer for the state. Um, plus, of this, you know, phenomenon of job lock, where people may be staying in a job they don't like because they need that insurance. But now, when we more from the insurance market, people can really, you know, take a chance, find new jobs, run their own business without fear that they will, you know, kind of fall through the cracks and not be able to, um, to get insurance. So. 
I think, in my view, in my opinion, you can't afford to not expand Medicaid. Uh, you know, if we don't go for this expansion, we're kind of leaving a lot of federal money on the table. We're missing out on this opportunity for these positive health and economic impacts. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much what I think about that. So. Thank you, Steve.